this morning our, our New Testament reading is Philippians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. And I know last week uh, Kathy started in Philippians 4, which is also one of my favorite passages in Philippians. I'm going to back up just a little bit this, this morning and uh, read from the Apostle Paul's uh, writing on the first chapter of Philippians. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Friends, these are God's good words. May he add his blessings upon them. So this morning, I'm going to quote from uh, some of the great theologians of my youth. Now, you guys, young guys in the back may not, may not know this, but you can look it up on YouTube. And uh, these, these folks were well known uh, when I was growing up. Uh, Elmer Fudd, Daffy Duck, and Bugs Bunny. Uh, they had so much wisdom to share with us back then. And, and uh, this morning, uh, especially as it, it is sort of in that hunting season, it, for those of you who may remember, um, I, I, Linda didn't remember too much of this. She looked it up on YouTube, and I got some laughs out of her, so I'm not shooting for laughs, but for those of us who remember, Elmer Fudd would head out with his gun in, in hunting season, and he would go looking for, for Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, and when he would find them and start to, to beat in on them, Daffy, uh, they, Bugs Bunny would go, I, I, I see that it's, it's uh, rabbit wabbit season, and uh, Bugs Bunny would say, no, it's duck season and then so the next thing you know he's he's pointing at the duck daffy duck daffy goes no it's it's wabbit season and he points back over here it's duck season wabbit season what se-? and then finally bugs bunny would go it's wabbit season he go duck season shoot and he would shoot um the, the the daffy duck and so back and forth i had this experience i've shared before when i was sitting across the table with a, a young person in the, one of the families that i lived at there's a little neighborhood child that came over and uh, this child looked at me and just out of the blue I have no idea where this child got that said you're fat and I said I am not he said you are too I said I am not he said you are too I am not you are too I said I am too he goes you are not I said okay that's it and it wasn't until I was working on this sermon that I realized that uh, that I I got that piece of wisdom from uh, Elmer Fudd Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck um, so we, we have different seasons, and again, it's hunting season for many people. For other people, it's football season. We live and die by our football teams this time of year, and we, we celebrate all the colors of football season and our teams and helmets and all those sorts of things. Uh, for others, it's, uh, I, I did run into one of our young, younger um, members yesterday um, up at the, the racetrack on the way to get some gas, and he was telling me he'd gotten his first his first deer of the season, so it definitely is deer season uh, somewhere, I'm hoping, that he's out getting, getting deer, uh, or either he's in trouble, so I won't use his name this morning. And uh, it's candy season for many of us. I love candy season, too. Halloween's right around the corner, and I have some of my favorites that I'm looking for, uh, mostly chocolate, but I'm, uh, I love candy season. But it's also, uh, it's leaf season, and, and many people begin to go out and look at the leaves and uh, we went up to near Talking Rock yesterday, and you could just see on the way some of the leaves are starting to turn color a little bit, certain trees, and it's just so beautiful to look at, and, and it's to drive through, and in just a few weeks, all the trees will start being, just be looking beautiful, and, uh, but for me, leaf season has its own challenges, because we, we are surrounded in our, our, our little house with, with all kinds of trees, every kind of tree I, you can imagine, with all kinds of leaves, and everything else that comes with that from pine cones to little acorns to this like all these little little other nuts that are over there and and once the leaves start dropping they start dropping everything else and my yard just gets covered and it leaves are all over the yard and I take the dog out lucky in the morning and in the evening and sometimes in between and uh, he, I, he he's close to the ground so he's always grabbing something, some kind of nut or some kind of pine cone or something uh, that he's determined to bring into the house. 
And so I'm determined to get it out. And when I stick my finger in there, I come up with a big hole in my finger. And, and Linda's kind of been like, oh, no, he's not that bad. Well, she sent me a picture this week where he finally clamped down on her finger and uh, got the same picture with her having a hole in her finger. So leaf season is kind of a mixed season for me. I love looking at it. I don't like messing with it. And then, of course, if you walk your dog in your yard with the, with the leaves being covered, you don't know. You've got to check your shoes really well before you go back in the house. Uh, the beauty of leaf, leaf season, I, I hope that there are no um, bi, bi, botanical ex experts here this morning because I, I got this. I didn't fact check it too deeply, but it was on the Internet, right? And so if it's on the Internet, it has to have some truth to it. And uh, according to Peter Raven, the president of the Missouri Botanical Gardens, now that sounds like an expert to me, at least more than I am, a renowned botanist. And if you have a, a, something like that, a renowned person, then it's got, some people are already fact-checking me. I'm in trouble here. The wind doesn't gently pull the leaves off the trees. Trees are more proactive than that. They, they throw their leaves off. Instead of calling this the fall, if trees could talk, they'd be calling it get off me season. I like that, get off me season, and here's why. Around this time in the northern hemis hemisphere, I know I'm using big words that I usually don't use today, hemisphere and all that, but um, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to grow. As the days grow shorter and colder, the changes trigger a, a hormone, hormone change in the tree and in the leaf area and the leaf droppings that send a chemical message to every leaf that says, in essence, time to go, let's part company. And so the leaves are, are there's this, um, and when I looked at that, I said, God is so amazing that, that leaves don't just fall off, that he has created trees and leaves and things that happen in seasons for a reason and, and for a time. And uh, so once the message is received, Raven says, a little cell appears at the place, of the place where the leaf stem meets the branch, right, right at that little point, and they're called abscission cells. If that word sounds familiar, it's because they have the same root word as scissors. And this little chemical reaction starts to sort of work away at the leaves, and it, and it cuts it off from the nourishment, and then finally the leaves just fall off. Um, it, like the, they just kind of make a little cut and little scissors. I was reading somewhere else about leaves and trees and why all this happens, and it says, well, you know, during the winter, especially in so many places, that it, with the, the wind and the snow and the ice and all those sorts of things, if they didn't let go of their leaves, it would be so much easier for those branches to get heavier and start to break off the, leaf, the, the branches. And so God has arranged it so that he, he is, has, is protecting the trees by allowing those leaves to fall. We look at the leaves and we say, what? Oh, aren't they so pretty? They got so much nice color to them. It's great. Let's go for a ride in the mountains and see the pretty leaves. When, when in actuality, what we're looking at is a bunch of dead leaves. And, and, we've, and we've found something beautiful in something that really is decaying. After a while, it can turn to mulch. It can, it can turn to all kinds of things out there in the, in the wild. But it's beautiful to us. But if you were a leaf and you could actually feel what was going on, first of all, you'd start feeling the cutting, and you'd go, that's not great. Then you're like, man, they quit feeding me. I'm starving. Then you'd find yourself uh, falling to the ground and everybody trampling on you, and you'd be going, this is not a great time to be a leaf. And we never hear from those leaves again. At some point, they disappear. They they. they they just go away for whatever reason that happens. Uh, it, it's, it's important to realize that the seasons of our lives, the Bible talks about seasons in our lives. And God has wisdom for us to, to think about during these times. Uh, that the change in the trees, not only is it good for them and do we appreciate it, we don't often appreciate the change in our lives. We don't look forward to it, especially some of those more painful seasons in our lives. But we hear this from the writer of Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. Some of those that are listed, a time to be born and a time to die. They're both part of that cycle that God has for us. A time to plant, 
a time to uproot, a time to kill, kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep. And then there's a time to laugh. Many of us enjoy the time to laugh much more than the time to weep, but, but weeping is part of the life experience that we have, a time to mourn. But on the other hand, we're told that there's a time to dance. Uh, last night we had the, the, the opportunity, a few of us, to go up and see Josh and Ashley uh, get married. And if, you, if, if you're not sure who those, Josh is the young man with a little bit longer hair, plays the guitar, and is, is very outgoing and, and, um, and raises hands and loves the Lord. And Ashley and all the people were there at the, at the wedding, there were these young people. And, and when, I was, when I was a kid... And we got married, we walked in, and we got married. Yeah, I do, you do, we do. this is great, this is fun, we're having a good time. These kids, they, uh, these young people, they, they, they go off and they're going, woo, 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 and they're all, just a whole bunch of them. I know that was scary, Don't, I won't do that again. Uh, but, but to watch them do it, it was a time, their wedding, it was a time for them to dance. They were, ce- they were really celebrating. It was a great, a great wedding and a great, great place to, uh, to be with them. But sometimes we find ourselves in a season where we're called to mourn. And it's part of the, the life experience. A time to scatter stones, a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. It's hard to believe that there's a time and a season where we give up. But a time to keep and a time to throw away. In our house, we, as our kids were growing up, we... We, we seem to be gathering everything and not getting rid of anything. And then finally we became, after 30, um, 38 years of marriage, we finally became empty nesters recently, and it became a time to throw away. We, we backed up trucks and dumpsters and all kinds of stuff to, to just get things in there and clean out the house and start over. My daughter's room is now the gym. Christopher's room is now the music room. And, um, and, and, and it's, they don't, our kids grew up because we've been in this one place for 28 years. Our, our, our kids have uh, gotten used to that. They haven't really been back much to see all, all the things that w- what we did to, with their rooms yet. But uh, we know that there are times when we're gathering, and then there's times when we, it's time to get rid of some things. And that can be really hard, can't it? I, I remember um, w- w- when we were helping our in-laws moved from one part to another part of their facility and every time we would visit them it was don't you want this no I don't want that don't you want this no I don't want that and and, and if we know many of us that are our, our, the younger people today don't want all the stuff that we had even though it has so much meaning and, and it's, it's priceless and to us but to them it's not something they want to acquire and so finally, after about six, seven trips, I was seeing my mother-in-law, and she said, don't you want this? And I just said, I'll take that. And it was a wooden footstool that um, her dad or somebody had made. And she says, you want that? I went, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. And after I took it, she didn't give, want to give me anything else. I don't know if she thought I had, <laughs> I had bad taste or something. I don't know. Um, but I did at one point when, I, when she said I was going to, you know, I, don't you want this? I said, Jane, if you give us one more thing, I'm going to go home and pack up all the stuff I don't want anymore, and I'm going to bring it and give it to you all at once. And it got quiet for a week, a little while after that. Uh, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent, which is hard, of, hard for many of us, myself included at times, and a time to speak. That they have all of these things, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Changes can be difficult. They can, uh, I, I am someone who likes change as long as I'm not the one who has to do it. I, I've felt that, and I think I've talked to some people who felt that way before. Um, but also the change in the seasons of our lives, sometimes we come to realize that we have an idea, we've made plans, and it's good to plan. It's good to lay things out and have an idea about where we want to go and what we're going to do, especially when we get to certain benchmarks, whether it's into college or retirement or just job change and all the things that come along. Uh, but in James chapter 4, I believe that, uh, I believe that one, of the, one of the groups is studying James a little bit. And so James chapter 4, 
it reminds us that while we while we make these plans we have to make in these seasons of change we have to make sure that we're seeking what god wants for us not just what we're planning and what we've decided to do uh, james writes now listen you who say today and tomorrow we'll go to this city or that city Sp we're gonna spend a year here or there carry on business and make money why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life james writes you're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say well if it's the lord's will we will live and do this or that and there's a distinction it doesn't mean we don't make plans but we submit our plans to God and say, during these changes, Lord, admit that I don't always have the ultimate wisdom. And God, let your will be done as we pray uh, on Sunday mornings with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, maybe this season of your life is a, is a, is a time that you're sitting there this morning going, oh, but some of these changes and these seasons can be confusing. Some of them can be difficult. Some of them can be downright hard. Uh, we go through different things. Maybe it's work-related, and the, 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 the business that we work in has just disappeared. There's so many industries that, that what things that people were doing are just now gone. They don't do it anymore. They become automated, or, or we've replaced it with all sorts of things, putting, putting different things online. I still get people calling me on a regular basis saying, Where's the nearest Christian bookstore? I go, I don't know, but if you find it, let me know. Because all of those Christian book bookstores, even little mom and pop ones that I used to love to go in and see, they're now all online. I always like to browse and see if it was something, read the first chapter and decide if it's something I wanted to follow. But they're, they're gone from, from being in regular places. Maybe it's relationship changes and the changes that we have uh, sometimes the friendships change. I, I, I re I've been told over the years that even with friendships, and I've experienced it, some, some friendships are, are good for us. They're, they're for a reason to help you or to encourage you, challenge you. They're for a season. Sometimes we move, and, and uh, rarely do we, if, especially if we move around a lot, our best friends from high school, college, maybe those first jobs, somebody ask you what happened to Timmy your best friend in high school and your and your honest answer is I, I have no idea I don't know where in the heck they are I can't even find them on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn they just vanished uh, that these friendships or relationships we know that there are harder harder things that happen in the changes that come into um, into our relationships maybe it's a season when the, the relationships you've had have taken a turn for maybe the better. And sometimes the better means a, a change of focus and energy and time, maybe for worse, and it means mourning and grieving and going through difficulties. Maybe it's health changes and we find ourselves not as, as able to, to go and do places and do things as we, as we might. I was listening to a, a podcast a few weeks ago and it said that they're, they're really, they're, three general types of, of uh, categories in retirement and uh, as people get older. And he said, you know, there's sort of the, the go-go phase, and I've watched this, where you retire and everybody's like, man, let's go. We've been wanting to take that trip and get on that cruise and go to those mountains and do all those things. And that, that part of, of getting to a place where you can just go, go, go. And then there becomes a, a, a part in and it's not cut and dried in terms of when this happens, but you can kind of see it from observing. There becomes more of a slow go phase. And you go from go, go, I'll go anywhere, let's run, let's do, to kind of like, oh, you know, I'm not sure I really want to drive down into Atlanta anymore. And I don't want to make that big turn. I, I don't want to be on the road and it's gotten harder and I can't take those steps anymore. And, and it's gotten more difficult. And then there's a season that this, this podcaster said was that there's a no-go phase when we settle in and we have to uh, begin to do things closer to home for whatever reason there are. And so even life has its changes and its, its, its ebb and flow in the things that are going on. Um, we sometimes see changes in the church and, 
with God, if God is the God who, who has created change, uh, we shouldn't fear change in the church. Uh, not all change is good. In fact, even some that I've been a part of have not been good. But sometimes you don't know that. And, and one of, sometimes we're afraid to even make mistakes. And God, I think, wants us to, to, to try. And, and we can't do anything in life and grow and learn unless we make mistakes and make corrections. But that sometimes when we see things that, that change in the church, uh, the first option should not be, I'm going to fear it. Rather, to seek God for discernment. Is, is, this a good, is this a good change? Is it a God change? Is it something that really is coming for a reason? Things that have changed so much in churches since I became a pastor, it's just I, I could talk for a while just on that, how, how much changes in churches have, have become in denominations and all those sorts of things. But there's a point where in all these seasons of change, I want to encourage myself, encourage all of us to trust that God is, is working, that God is in control, that, that the changes we go through may seem like they're permanent, but very often they will just be temporary. And the changes sometimes in the end will be things that we embrace and we like. I didn't think I would like that, but it turned out to be for my benefit or for the good as we, we think about this, the scriptures and, and think about the changes, we say, well, what if we just give in to all of this change? What are we going to do? It feels so uneasy. Remember that while things change, people changes, organizations change, God doesn't change. He is a solid rock that we can come back to and lean on in all the changes. In Malachi, the scripture says, for I am the Lord. I do not change. From Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, the writer says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. With all the change around us, even the climate change and weather changes, and political changes, and all those sorts of things, we can find ourselves just wringing our hands and worried to death but I encourage us to hear God's word, which is, God's got this. It may seem like it's out of control, but we're told that God has this. He even raises up political leaders and people who run countries and people who, all the things that are going on, God has, has it in, under control. Even if it seems like, boy, it's just spinning in the wind. There's a, a verse I want to close with this morning, Philippians chapter 1. Change is inevitable. God is constant. But God is also at work and will continue to be at work no matter what the change that you're going through is. Paul writes that, that verse in verse 6 in chapter 1 that we read earlier, that he was confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Scriptures promise to us that God is still at work. He will complete that good work in you, the one that he started in Christ. We need not fear. We need not be anxious all the time. It's understandable we're going to worry from time to time, but God doesn't want us to live in worry. He wants us to learn to trust in him, even when the world is shaky and falling apart. God is good, and he loves us so. And he'll be with us and wants us to turn to him and realize, maybe you're saying today, God, this change is just overwhelming. But maybe, God, you're still working for my good. And not only is it a maybe, it's a guarantee. Because the Bible is something we can trust in and hold on to. And if, if you can't hold on to those things that are changing, please, please keep holding on and trusting in Him. Let's pray. God, we have small changes. Sometimes it's as simple as someone's changed the ingredient in our favorite ice cream or food 
and yet it's disturbing because we've loved it ever since they made it, and for some reason they think they're going to change it, and we don't like it. Maybe it's a, a change where we have no, feel like we have no control, where uh, someone's come in and told us we're going to be transferred or we have to move or someone's leaving or something's going on. And God, those seasons can be incredibly painful. Maybe the doctor's brought news in that, that tells us that this season of life is changing uh, from our previous activity level to a, a new one that is going to be much less active. God, whatever we're going through, and I, I know I haven't even touched on all that, that we're going through as a congregation or a community or a world, but help us to trust just like you have worked things out even in a, even in a tree that, that is just created to know when it's time to let go of its leaves to start over God help us to seek you and seek your will in those directions that we go and trust you to believe that you've got our back you're in control and you love us even if it's difficult in the middle of it in Jesus name Amen Let's stand together and worship the Lord as we sing Lord I need you
Please be seated. This morning, as we lift up our congregation, community, and the world around us, we'll start with uh, Jack Nevitt, who's having a stem cell procedure uh, that started this week, and he'll be in isolation for a little bit, so pray. So far, so good, and, uh, but just, just pray. Uh, J- Jack is, uh, some, likes to be up and around and doing things, and he's got to be a little bit more um, stationary for a little bit. So pray. He feels like he's in good hands, and, and uh, he, he, he is uh, trusting that God's working through the medicines and the doctors and all that. And um, just, just pray for Jack and Amanda and their continued journey, and, and that those, the, the, again, that God has, has helped people to realize how, what kind of miracles there can be with these stem cell kind of procedures. So uh, we pray for his quick, quick and full, more importantly, full recovery. I want to pray for Ken Yagyu. Ken um, has opened his eyes. He's not communicating, but he is uh, observant and looking around and uh, in, in, in kind of stable condition right now. And just pray for his, his brain to continue to heal and uh, for him to get better. And, and Jennifer's here this morning, and we're praying for you. And uh, God bless you. We know this, uh, this is a, uh, one of those seasons of change that you didn't expect. It's very difficult. And uh, so we're praying for you, and we love you, and, and hope that uh, things continue to, uh, to go get better. So we're glad he's in. I think he, I went down, checked on him. He looked like he's in great hands and great care, and we're right where he needs to be for now. So we're thankful for that, but keep praying for him. Dick Taylor, who he had a uh, procedure this past week, and uh, is up in now, I believe it's in Floyd County, and he's going to be there for about six weeks in physical therapy, uh, but it relieved some pressure in his brain and and he is now um, thinking much clearer talked to him on the phone and he was just uh, much more alert and and present and so that's a great great thing and he'll hopefully be back with us over here that they he and Sandy are currently staying at the Oaks over on Cedar Crest and uh, hopefully Dick will be back over there it'll be a few weeks before he gets there Robin Johnson stepson Andy who we prayed for over the months only has a few months to live, so pray for God's mercy and comfort in that, that remaining time he has. I want to pray for the young, young man that we've prayed for often in the last few years. Praise is his name, and he certainly does praise. I think that's a fitting name for him. And uh, he is having surgery. I, I, I read, uh, Louise sent me a, a text or email yesterday. I got another one from the Kenya Connection folks today. I read it early with one eye open. I don't think it was my good eye, so I could be wrong. You can correct me, but I think the doctor's coming from here is actually going over there to, to do the surgery. Is that correct? He's going back over there to, to do the surgery, and it's a, um, I believe it's a, a, a tumor that he's had that they're going back and working on that some more, and then they're going to do some reconstructive uh, parts to all the surgeries that he's had. So uh, pray for him, the doctors, and everybody that, that things go well. Remember, praise in your, in your prayers. And then again, just to, just to end with a, a praise, uh, Josh and Ashley got married last night. It was, it was a beautiful ceremony. And uh, that, that, you know, I, unfortunately, I find myself, uh, it, it's, as I get a little older, going, oh, those kids sure, sure were cute. Now, they're not kids. They're adults. And um, they're very mature uh, and very spiritually mature. But uh, uh, what a what a great celebration! And uh, for all, for those of us who were confused for many months, um, uh, Josh married Ashley, and it's official. Uh, Ashley did not marry Cam. He's already married now, and uh, there we saw them as well. And they're they're doing wonderful as well. So check out. I put a picture up on the church Facebook page today of Josh and Ashley see how happy they are maybe we'll uh, figure out get one up on the screen when they get back just to celebrate with them so let's go before God in prayer God for all who are struggling who are weary and stressed overwhelmed burdened help us to remember that, that son Jesus said that we could come to you all of us who are weary and burdened and find rest for our souls God I pray that we could come and 
acknowledge wherever we are where things are a little bit hard right now and, and find you and your comfort and trust you in the steps ahead. God, we, we may only see darkness at the moment. But God, just like the leaves fall and the trees are bare, there's a season when they begin to bud again. And through, through those things that we go through, we, we will trust that there will be a season. It may not look like what we hoped it would, but that you would breathe new life into those situations, those corners of our lives. And God, we would come to praise you for those things that we now are so confused about. We come to you now for a moment of quiet. We may be to name that thing, that, that season that we're in. It may just be to give it to you, or it may be something totally different, maybe just to give you thanks. So Lord, we come now. God, as we look around the world, help us to see not only the, the trouble and the struggles, but see the blessings and the joy. Help us to live each day knowing that things can change in a moment, in an instant. God, we, as we leave this, this place today, help us to leave with a sense of hope and anticipation that you are still up to good things and that we can trust you with all our lives. And above all else, help us to seek your will, not our own. We trust that your kingdom will come not just one day, but it is here now and, and even within us. Help us to pause often through the week and to find you with us and to talk to you about those things that are important to us. We pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we leave this morning, offering plates in the back, online, all those places. If you're having troubles finding out how to give to the church, let us know. We'll help. And uh, we thank you again for your generosity and all the good things that God is doing through our collective giving together. Uh, sometimes uh, we feel like the little bit that we give may not go very far, but we're reminded of the widow's might where, where Jesus said it's, it's, it's the meaning behind what someone gives and, and when we give at a trust, and, and, and there you go. That's the picture. Don't they look beautiful? That's good. Go into the world with that kind of enthusiasm. Giving not only, a, God loves a cheerful giver. Give to the church, give to those in need. Go out in the world and give as God leads. And now may God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be and abide with you all, both now and forevermore. God bless you.